Believe it or not, it is April 2024. Quarter one is officially over. Let's do a quick reading wrap up. I'm fairly proud of myself. I've read seven books so far this year, and it is a mix. Some I loved, some I did not love, and I've read a mix of nonfiction too, so I'm really excited to kind of cover those. That was one of my goals this year, and I was kind of expecting myself to dally on that and to not actually delve into nonfiction until much later in the year, but I hit the ground running this year. So let's just go in order from what I read from the beginning of the year to now the end of March. Let's start with this one. This was a Christmas gift and it was adorable. It's the boy, the mole, the fox, and the horse. Actually, it looks like a kid's book. It reads kind of like a kid's book, but honestly, this book is for readers of all ages. It has some really great life lessons. It's really cute. It's just a really nice story of love, friendship, forgiveness, kindness, and especially kindness for yourself. It's chock full of a bunch of beautiful quotes. This one blew up quite a while ago and I've been meaning to read it. I don't know why I've put it off for so long, but it also has some really gorgeous artwork in here as well. You hear celebrities talking about this one a lot too. So I think that really says something. You can get through this in a span of probably 30 minutes, but if you really want to sit down and enjoy the artwork, I would recommend at least spending maybe an hour on it, but you have quite a variety of different types of artwork. So as you can see, for example, we have some in color, some are black and white, and you also get a variety of just different kinds of artworks. It's just beautiful. I love this book but some are very basic sketch drawings. Some are a little bit more extensive, super cute book makes for a great gift. I absolutely loved it. It's rated really, really high on Goodreads as well. So that should also tell you something, but definitely five out of five stars. Loved it. Okay, so the next one that I read was actually a nonfiction book by Scott Matthews. It is the history of the Titanic. Well, it's called a brief history of the Titanic. And it's heavy hearted, but you'll learn a lot of really devastating facts. The whole sinking of the Titanic honestly could have been prevented had they had the right training in place, the proper protocols had been followed if they didn't take any shortcuts. Like for example, they had a shortage of lifeboats because they didn't want to obstruct the view from the promenade, which that's insane. That's absolutely insane. There was just a lot of little things that went wrong that could have prevented such a devastating event. But Super heavy hearted read. It's very quick. It's easy to understand. It's concise. It comes with pictures. So that makes the reading experience go on, go along a lot quicker. But honestly, you would be surprised by how accurate the movie, the Titanic is, as in the one with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Oddly accurate. There's a lot of scenes in there that are actually true. Like when some of the crew members were locking people down at the bottom of the boat, these third class passengers, they were doing that to reserve the lifeboats for the first class passengers because they knew that there was a shortage. So anyways, super crazy. But a lot of that movie is shockingly accurate. Five out of five. The next one I read is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. You don't need to read this book. This one is extremely popular on Book Talk, Bookstagram, BookTube. But honestly, I really struggled to understand the hype here. The storyline was okay. It was good enough for me to keep going, I guess. But I really despise the main male character in this book. His name is Knox. And of course, you have the grumpy meets sunshine trope and he's just way too grumpy. Honestly, he's kind of an asshole. Actually, no, he's just an asshole the entire book. So I don't know why people like him. I, he's weirdly aggressive and possessive and just moody and definitely not my type of book boyfriend. But if you love it, so glad you're not alone. It's rated super high on Goodreads. It's like a four point something. And so a lot of folks really, really love this one. It simply just was not for me. Naomi Witt, the main character, she was all right. She was obviously sunshine, but there's a ton of tropes in here actually. So grumpy and sun, grumpy meets sunshine. You have some fake dating in there as well. Um, let's see. I feel like there's something else that I can't remember. Just a really quick synopsis of this story. Naomi meets Knox. They have a pretty terrible first meeting because she was mistaken for her evil twin sister, Tina. Yes, evil twin sister. That's right. So she's the good one. Her twin sister is the bad one. Knox mistakes her for the bad one and pretty much tells her out trying to kick her out of this cafe. Naomi ends up in this town because number one, she 
is answering an SOS call from her sister. Her sister Tina says she's in trouble, she needs help. So Naomi comes running and she knows better. She should not respond to this call for help, but she's going to. And she actually just ran out on her wedding from this terrible guy named Warren, Warner, something with a W, can never remember his name, but doesn't matter. She runs out on her wedding. So now she's found herself in a new town, no job, essentially no savings. And so she's having to figure it out. And now she's trying to help her sister who ends up leaving Naomi with her 11-year-old daughter. So Naomi is now stuck with an 11-year-old niece named Waylay, who she didn't even know existed. So now she's having to navigate this new life in a new town with nobody that she knows. And she ends up, of course, getting to know Knox Morgan a little bit better. But, oh, also Knox has a brother. His name is Nash. And Nash is the nice guy. So, of course, you have Knox, the bad boy, and Nash, the nice guy. Personally, Lucy Score wasn't meaning to write this kind of love story, but I was hoping Naomi and Nash would hit it off, the good girl and the good guy. That's my kind of love story. I think I would have responded a lot better to something like that. But Knox was simply way too grumpy. Also, he cursed a lot, like a lot. And it was super unnecessary, in my opinion. It was ex super big turnoff for me. I was not about that. And then Naomi, funny enough, I mean, she, one of her character quirks was she was supposed to have this extensive vocabulary. That's what people knew her for. I'm sorry. I was not impressed with her vocabulary whatsoever. I found it very mediocre. And Knox was always teasing her about that amazing extensive vocabulary. I'm like, there's nothing impressive about her vocabulary, but it's whatever. And then Knox is also a terrible role model to Waylay. He buys her things and provides for her in that regard, but he is constantly swearing in front of her. And again, I just, the bleh, not for me. Two stars. I think that's pretty fair. I was interested enough to keep going and to actually finish it. And it was pretty long too. I feel like they could have, I feel like Lucy Score could have consolidated this one. It did not need to be this long, but it's almost 500 pages. It wasn't for me. Two stars. The next one I read was, why do we say that? And again, another Scott Matthews book. This is 404 idioms, sayings, phrases that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've given little to zero thought as to where those idioms originate. And so this was very interesting. It's very brief. So it's super easy to fly through, but it gives you a good idea of where did this saying originate? Where, where did it come from? What's the history of it? And oh, it's kind of nice too, because it's like a laundry list of idioms. And so it's broken up every 10 idioms. You have a break of just some random facts that helps move the book along a little bit quicker. But just for example, like if you're ever wondering where the rat race came from, you probably hear that all the time or knock yourself out. So if you're interested in the history of all those, definitely recommend it. It's a lot. It's not really meant to be read in one sitting. You don't just sit here and read it cover to cover, but I definitely recommend kind of picking through the idioms and phrases that you're most interested in and then reading those because some of them are extremely interesting and there are sayings that we use all the time. And now that you're probably aware of it, you might wonder, hey, where did that come from? This one was good. I enjoyed it. Four out of five stars. Oh, the next one is Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Oh, I just got to start with five out of five stars. This was absolutely amazing. I went in with zero expectations. I'm actually surprised that I gave this one a shot because I read Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Mass, Moss, oops, I always say that wrong. I read it about a year and a half ago. And honestly, I really didn't like it. I went in with the wrong mindset because I didn't realize it was kind of a retelling. It's pretty much Beauty and the Beast, but also kind of similar to Shadow and Bone. I don't know. I, for me, that book was just kind of a mess. And it was also, it didn't live up to the hype for me because everybody was just raving about it all the time. So I expected it to be the best thing I've ever read in my entire life. But Throne of Glass, I absolutely love this one. This one's also rated super high on Goodreads, a four point something. And I really love the main female character. Her name is Selena Sardothian, which is an awesome name, but she's also just a badass. She is a world famous assassin. It follows her journey after she's been released from this prison called Endovier. And I absolutely loved it. There's a lot of complaints about this book because this was Sarah J. Mass's first book. And so people say that the writing is really bad. Honestly, I thought it was fine. It didn't bother me whatsoever, but 
I'm the kind of reader that goes into a book looking for a good story. If it's written wonderfully, if it's written beautifully, kind of like a classic, that's great. That's just a bonus for me. Definitely not a necessity, but I loved this story. I understand some of the complaints in this. There are trials that Selena has to go through in order to achieve this ultimate goal at the end where she's actually competing to become the king's right-hand assassin. And uh, she has to go through a bunch of trials and she's competing against, I think, 23, 24 other uh, champions. And there is not a whole lot of detail on each of these trials. And some of them are kind of basic, but for me, the story wasn't really about that. So I was okay that a lot of them were kind of skipped over, glazed over. Some of them were just super basic, um, nothing really crazy, but I really, really enjoyed this one. I have nothing but good things to say about it. I understand and appreciate other people's complaints, but for me, I was completely fine with that. I was totally fine with the story. I was completely fine with the writing, but yeah, five out of five. The next one I read was another nonfiction book by Scott Matthews, Queen Elizabeth II. This one is so good just because I really knew very little about the Queen of England. And there is a lot to be said about how she ruled, about her leadership style, about being just an, an amazing influence and one of the most amazing monarchs in the history of ever. So I really enjoyed this one. This one also has some photos and they're beautiful. Let me just share this one with you. So yes, if you are interested in learning more about the queen's life, highly recommend this one. Five out of five. She was an incredible woman and I think everyone needs to know a little bit more about her. So five out of five. Okay. The last one that brings me up to date so far at the end of quarter one is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. You don't need to read this one either. This one was a solid two out of five stars for me. Honestly, I really don't understand the hype about this one whatsoever. Do not understand. It's described as a cozy fantasy and maybe that's simply just not my genre, but wow, this was so incredibly boring. I was bored the entire time. If you read the back of the book, that's a story. It's really about this orc named Viv who leaves behind her life as um, she's kind of like a mercenary type thing. I don't know. It's her past is kind of unclear, but she leaves behind her old life and decides to open up a coffee shop in a town called Thune where nobody has heard of coffee. That's it. I did an entire video on this one where I give you an entire plot summary. It's a very quick video because not much happens in this really boring book. So that's it for me on Cozy Fantasy. I will not be reading any more Travis Baldry. Um, the only reason I give it a two stars instead of a one is the saving grace of this book is at the very back, there is a bonus prequel. Viv's last job is discussed before she leaves behind her old life. So there's a little bit more action. There's actually stuff going on. So as this book is described, it's high fantasy, low stakes, super low stakes, so low that I did not care what happened to any of these characters. There's also a random love interest that kind of comes out of nowhere that I wasn't a huge fan of. So if you love this book, I'm so glad you're not alone. This one's rated super high on Goodreads as well. Simply was it for me. Easy two out of five stars. Correction. I actually read eight books this quarter and I don't know how I forgot. I don't know how I could forget that I read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. Five out of five. This one is incredibly popular. It came out early last year, 2023. The sequel is already out, which is on my list. I'm hoping to read that in quarter two, but I don't know how I forgot this one. This one was great. Although I will say the very first part of the book was very slow for me, but it really picks up. It is just your very classic fantasy tale. It follows this girl named Violet Sorengale and it was really good. I enjoyed it. It's about a war college. She has to bond with a dragon, you know, like all the good things. I have nothing but good things to say about this book. I will just say that it was slow for me initially. The first 300 pages, I was sitting around a three star rating, you know, very average, fine, nothing wrong with it, but it really picked up at the very end. I loved how Rebecca Yaros finished out this story. It made me really eager to read Iron Flame, which I still need to read it, but it made me excited about it. And I really enjoyed this one. I have a whole video that I did with JJ Kaimoris on this one. She's a dark fantasy author, amazing author. So go check that out if you haven't, but that was such a fun book discussion and we had a lot of fun making that video. So go check that one out. But yes, eight books in quarter one, hoping to make it to 10 in quarter two. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you later.